Αξιότιμε κυρία Γενική Διευθύντρια, αξιότιμε κύριε Γενική Γραμματέα, αξιότιμοι συνάδελφοι και φίλοι, κυρίε και κύριοι. Είναι μεγάλη μου χαρά και τιμή να σα καλωσορίσω απόψε σε αυτή τη μεγαλοπρεπή αίθουσα και να σα παρουσιάσω το έργο τη Βρετανική Σχολή Αθηνών το 2019. Καταρχά, θα ήθελα να εκφράσω εκ μέρου τη Βρετανική Σχολή τι θερμέ μα ευχαριστίε στο Γενικό Γραμματέα τη Εν Αθήνη Αρχαιολογική Εταιρεία, κ. Βασίλειο Πετράκο και στο προσωπικό της εταιρείας για την φιλοξενία τους. Επίσης, ευχαριστώ, ευχαριστώ θερμότητα το προσωπικό της Βρετανικής Σχολής στην Ελλάδα και στην Αγγλία για την συμβολή τους στο έργο της σχολής το οποίο θα παρουσιάσω σήμερα. Mr. General Director, Mr. General Secretary, distinguished colleagues and friends, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honor to welcome you to the annual open meeting of the British School of Athens. I begin by expressing the school's gratitude to the Secretary General of the Archaeological Society in Athens, Dr. Vasilios Petrakos, and to his staff for hosting this event once again in this magnificent venue. I also add my thanks as Director to all the BSA staff, both here in Greece and in the UK, for everything they've contributed to the programme of work I summarised this evening. Without their contribution, this program of activities would simply not have been possible. People debate whether this is the last year of the previous or the first of the next decade. Whichever it is, I take this opportunity to pose an existential question. What is the BSA for? Our statutes define our objects as to promote the study of Greece in all its aspects, in all periods, including modern times. That's the theory, logo men, since statutes express aims. I offer two concrete but contrasting examples of what this means in practice, ergo de. First is an individual researcher, Professor Roderick Beaton, a member of the BSA since the 1970s, and now Corrie's Professor Emeritus of Modern Greek and Byzantine History, Language and Literature at King's College London. Many of you will remember his excellent lecture on Venizelos here a year ago. You will also remember that he has an impressive list of major publications on Greek culture, capped recently by Greece Biography of a Modern Nation, a book that has already had a considerable impact as we all reflect on the bicentenary of Greece's birth in 1821. The BSA was thrilled when, at a ceremony last September, Roddy was made Commander of the Order of Honour of the Hellenic Republic by the President of Greece in recognition of his distinguished contribution to the study of modern Greece. In his response at the ceremony, Roddy singled out the BSA, and I also add the Gennadius Library, as resources that had supported his research throughout his career. As an aside, I note that Roddy's successor as Korai's chair, Professor Ronda van Steen, has hit the ground running, as it were, in relation to the British School at Athens, offering King's College's collaboration and support in a number of initiatives, and herself delivering to a large audience at the BSA last April a moving lecture on her recent research on the ad adoption of Greek children in the USA during the Cold War, now published as Adoption, Memory and Cold War Greece, Kid pro quo. My second example, in contrast, is a team effort, the Keros Naxos Seaways Project, led by Professor Colin Renfrew and Dr. Michael Boyd, sponsored by the BSA since 2008. In addition to its impressive publication record, the project has received significant press coverage in Greece and the UK, was the subject of a recent National Geographic documentary, and as you see here, won a Field Discovery Award at the 2019 Shanghai Archaeological Forum. That project's fieldwork programme ended in 2018, but its work continues, not only in publication, but in a programme of protection and stabilisation of the site of Lascalio, for which substantial funding had to be raised. Similarly, the team is giving back to the community on Anukufonisi that has hosted it for many years by staging a small exhibition of finds since 2008 in the local museum. 
the exhibition is called Des Apenambi, as you can see, look over there. Without the BSA's existence, neither of these two stories, each highlighting different styles of research, but both reflecting close collaboration with Greek colleagues, could be told. And of course, without the support of the British Academy since the middle of the last century, and of many generous donors, large and small, since our inception in 1886, the BSA itself would not exist and be able to carry out the programme of activities I summarised this evening. Communication remains central to the BSA's desire to engage as many as possible in our work and to disseminate what we do. If you're not familiar with the BSA, I urge you to visit our website, to follow us on Facebook and Twitter, or to sign up for e-alerts about our events. On our website, you will now find a recently instituted beta version of BSA Digital Collections, which makes some of our resources available to a worldwide audience. Comments are very welcome on this beta version. An additional outward-facing feature on our website are our blogs. Our Fitch Laboratory blog, inaugurated in 2018, was recently joined by an archive blog, complementing the Digital Collections page. Stay tuned for more content on all of these channels. It's primarily through our publications that we engage the academic community. In 2019, we have not only published our two print journals on the left, the Annual of the British School at Athens and Archaeological Reports. The latter is produced in collaboration with the Hellenic Society and with the much appreciated, generous cooperation of many colleagues here in Greece. The journal is now under the joint editorship of Drs. Yanis Galanakis in Cambridge and Andrew Shaplin at the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford. We warmly thank our former editor, Dr. Maria Stamatopoulou, also from Oxford, for her stewardship, stewardship of the journal and her assistance in assuring a smooth handover. 2019 saw another volume, the eighth so far, in our Modern Greek and Byzantine Studies series, published by Routledge, Insular Destinies by Pascalis Kitromelidis, a collection of his essays on the recent history of the island of Cyprus. A further volume in our in-house supplementary volume series, the Mason's Marks of My Own Knossos recently appeared in time to reach its author, Sinclair Hood, before his 103rd birthday at the end of January. Publications outside our series included a further volume by the Keros Naxos team and another from the Arts and Humanities Research Council funded project Attic Inscriptions in UK Collections, part of a larger enterprise directed by 2018 BSA Visiting Fellow Professor Stephen Lambert from Cardiff. This volume, decreased from the British Museum, joined its 2018 counterpart, publishing those from the BSA itself. The BSA's programme in 2019 was extensive. In presenting it, I emphasise once again our major role as a facilitator of research. We bring UK-based researchers into contact with their counterparts in Greece and vice versa. We also offer links to the other foreign schools and institutes in Athens. There's more information in our June and December newsletters, which are available for download from our website, and many of our lectures are also available in our video archive, also on the website. Public lectures in Athens included the annual Fitch Lecture, deli delivered by Professor Glynis Jones from Sheffield, also a BSA Vice President, on the origins and spread of agriculture. What do the plants have to say? The annual Bader Archive Lecture, given by Celeste Farge from the British Museum, on the William Gell's journals at the BSA and at the British Museum. The Michael Freda Memorial Lecture, presented by Professor George Boyd Stones, then of Durham, now of Toronto, on the rationality of the Stoic God. And the annual Institute of Classical Studies, British School of Athens, National Hellenic Research Foundation Lecture, delivered by Professor Peter Toneman of Oxford on Abdera, Teos and Rome, based on the first public presentation of a new inscription found at Teos, near modern Suyajuk, uh, in 2017. The BSA also hosted several conferences on Sir Arthur Evans and the Great War in partnership with the Ministry of uh, Culture and Sports and the Athens Symphony Orchestra, including a rare performance of Delius's Requiem, introduced by Delius scholar Professor Daniel Grimley from Oxford, a broad-ranging exploration of popular music of the Greek world, an innovative exploration of craftsperson mobility in the archaeological, historical and ethnographic record in collaboration with the Hellenic Folklore Research Centre of the Academy of Athens, and on tokens, the Athenian legacy to the modern world in association with an EU-funded research programme based at Warwick University. 
The BSA also contributed to an important conference, They Are Not Silent After All, organised by the Museum's Director to the Ministry of Culture and Sports on the ethics and display of human remains from archaeological sites. Upper House seminars included talks by three assistant directors. Michael Loy, on his, director, uh, on his doctoral research on connectivity in archaic Greece, his predecessor, Prisanti Papadopoulou, now at the University of the Peloponnese, on fear and ritual performance in classical Athens, and her predecessor, Robert Pitt, uh, College Year of Athens, College Year in Athens, on identifying inscriptions recorded by early modern travellers to Athens. Also, Director General of Antiquities and Cultural Heritage, Dr. Polixeni Adam Veleni, presented the spectacular finds from the Thessaloniki Metro work. Book presentations included Anne Eldridge's Mon Invasia, People, Place and Presence, Angie Hobbs's Ladybird Expert book on Plato's Republic, Katerina Galani's Brill volume, British Shipping in the Mediterranean during the Napoleonic Wars, and Michalis Ganas, a Greek ballad, a bilingual selection of his poetry published by Yale University Press. The evening, attended by Ganas himself, included readings and musical settings of his poems. We also helped the British Council celebrate 80 years in Greece by hosting an evening of poetry written and performed by Bristol-based Vanessa Kisoule and Athens-based Pavlina Marvin, entitled 80 Years Ago, 80 Years From Now. In the UK, there were events in Manchester, Newcastle and St Andrews, while in London we hosted the annual British School at Athens Institute of Classical Studies lecture by Dr Maria Andreadaki Lazaki, former Secretary General of the Ministry of Culture and Sports, on Human Sacrifice in the Late Bronze Age Hanya, Edith Hall on Modern Responses to Troy in connection with the current exhibition at the British Museum, and Victoria Hislop in conversation with former UK Ambassador to Greece, John Kitner. Last month, we held panel discussions in both Athens and London on migrations and diasporas, covering both contemporary migration and historic movements. Early career fellow, Lambrini Rory, lecturer in politics at the University of Exeter, spent spring at the BSA researching different exp expressions of political violence in Greece from 2008 onwards, aiming to identify its repertoires and causes, the actors involved, their targets, their aims and its consequences. Her comment shown here is eloquent testimony to how the BSA promotes and facilitates research. A.G. Levendis Fellow in Hellenic Studies, Bella Dimova, completed her first year of research at the BSA on the textile economy of Greece and the Southern Balkans in the classical to Hellenistic period. One of her highlights in 2019 was the opportunity to view the exceptionally well-preserved 10th century BC textiles excavated by the British School at Athens and Greek colleagues in 1981 at Lefkandi, temporarily on display at the National Archaeological Museum. These are now being reanalyzed by specialists from Greece, Dr. Stella Sebantidaki and Dr. Christina Margariti, and Cambridge, Dr. Margareta Gleba, in collaboration with the Lefkandi team. When not posing with other students for a recreation of an archival photo from a century ago, Macmillan Rodevolt student, Dr. Charlotte van Regenmortel of Leicester, explored the relationship between the many military and economic developments in the ancient world in the late classical and early Hellenistic periods, employing theories and methodologies developed in the field of labor history. Not only did Charlotte complete her doctorate while at the BSA, but she was also appointed to an academic post in Groningen. Christina Ekin from the University College London analysed the extent to which communities across the southern Aegean both differentially participated in and contributed to what we identify as the, quote, Minoan and, quote, Mycenaean cultures. Using funerary evidence, she traced the long-term patterns of shifting interaction and made inferences about social groups, human mobility and cultural interaction. Analogous to other cases of ancient globalizations, her research has relevance in today's increasingly globalized and interconnected world. Halvard Ingier from St Andrews worked on island settlement and connectivity in the Cyclades during the late Roman and early medieval period, the mid third to the mid ninth centuries of the Common Era, as our second Richard Bradford McConnell student. We were fortunate also to have two other long-term student residents. Donald Crystal from Cardiff worked on completing his doctoral thesis, Who Were the Thracians? A Materialist Approach to Ancient Ethnicity, examining the relationship between the expressions of shared group identities through the mortuary record in the period 1100 to 500 BC in Thrace. And Nefeli Pirei Iliou 
from Oxford received a Leave the Human Study Found Foundation Study Abroad studentship to spend the year researching the nature of Roman villas in comparison to other rural estates in Epirus and to reconstruct the roles villas played with other rural sites in the Roman agricultural economy in the region. Our arts bursary holder, Onyeka Igwe, investigates in her doctoral research the colonial imagination and how it has created and circulated mainstream ways of knowing people, places and cultures through archives. At the BSA, she explored the colonial imagination in the context of figures visiting Greece around the time of the War of Independence, reading among the personal papers of George Findlay and William Gell in our archive. Her discovery of a 35 millimeter slide projector, almost a museum item uh, exhibit these days, uh, in the BSA artist studio, inspired her to record several slide projector performances to provide a framework for looking at images from the colonial archive. Archaeology forms a significant part of our research portfolio, and our work would not be possible without the cooperation and assistance of numerous colleagues in the Ministry of Culture and Sports. Before summarising our fieldwork in 2019, I begin by expressing the school's gratitude to the staff of the, Ministry of the Hellenic Ministry of Culture and Sports. We are most grateful to Dr. Maria Andreadaki Vlasaki, now the former Secretary General of the Ministry, and to Dr. Polixeni Adam Beleni, Director General of Antiquities and Cultural Heritage, as well as to the numerous colleagues in the Ministry who make our archaeological work, work possible. In particular, we thank those in charge of the regions in which we worked, Dr. Dimitris Athanasoulis from the Effort of Antiquities of the Cyclades, Dr. Stella Prisulaki, Effort of Antiquities of Piraeus and Islands, Dr. Angeliki Simosi, Effort of Antiquities of Evia, Mr. Ioannis Kanonidis, Effort of Antiquities of Chalkidiki and Mount Athos, Dr. Ephthemia Karantsali, Effort of Antiquities of Theotida and Evritania, Dr. Panayota Kasimi, from the Effort of Antiquities of Corinth, Corinthia, Mrs. Evangelia Pandu, Effort of Antiquities of Laconia, Dr. Alkistis Papadimitriou, Effort of Antiquities of the Argolid, Mrs. Chrysa Sofia Nu, Effort of Antiquities of Lasithi, and Dr. Vasiliki Sithiakaki, Effort of Antiquities of Heraklion. Three projects in the field in 2019 explore urban life at different scales, in different periods, and employing different research methods. Further details appear in our December 2019 newsletter, and also in Archaeology in Greece Online, Chronique des Fouilles en ligne, and here I show the site homepage of AG Online and the entry for Cuchulu Magula 2019. And I take this opportunity on behalf of the Ecole Francaise d'Athènes and ourselves to thank the Ministry of Culture and Sports and many other colleagues for contributing information and images to this constantly developing and valuable data resource. I pass over our first urban investigation, the Olynthos Project, a collaboration led by Dr. Bettina Sigarida from the Effort of Antiquities of Pella, Zosia Archibald from Liverpool, and Lisa Nevert from Michigan, which completed its sixth and final season in 2019. We will learn much more about this in the talk which follows. So I therefore travel further south and back in time to the middle Neolithic site of Kutrulu Magula. The BSA's 10-year investigation of the site of Kutrulu Magula in eastern Thessaly, in collaboration with the Effort of Antiquities of Theotida and Evritania, pauses for study following the 2019 season. Initiated in 2005 by Dr. Nina Kiparisi, Director Emerita of the Effort of Speleology and Paleoanthropology of Southern Greece, the collaborative project with the BSA, led by Professor Yanis Hamilakis, then at Southampton, now at Brown University, and also by Vasilis Tsamis, Tsamis of University College London, had its first season in 2010. The site's main period of occupation is Middle Neolithic, the mid-sixth millennium BC, although there is also a small Late Bronze Age solos on top of the mound and at least two Byzantine period burials. The 2019 season was one of the project's most, most successful, and its results were presented, presented in a press release by the Ministry of Culture and Sports and much covered in the Greek press. Among notable finds was a partially preserved house model, shown here in the bottom left, found in eight pieces in the same spot, probably deliberately broken in situ. On top of the mound, the most complicated area of the excavation because of the intensity of occupation, many successive episodes of use, destruction, rebuilding and reuse, and modern animal and human activity, the team established that a building partially unearthed from 2011 onwards 
formed part of a structure uncovered by the pre-2010 excavations situated under later Building 1. It is the largest so far on the site and one of the largest known from this period uh, in Greece, 9 by 8 metres. In Trench C15, a priority was to confirm the existence of kilns and to excavate and document in detail the best preserved example while clarifying whether other similar features were present. A focus was on kiln feature 2, identified in prior seasons. Painstaking excavation of the heavily burned, hardened red clay fill revealed the kiln floor after careful removal of the interior and exterior fill. The kiln's overall shape is that of a rounded trapezoid, about a metre across, its floor well plastered with a buff white layer of plaster, and the kiln opening at its southern end. The excavators suggest that the superstructure of the kiln was a, was a gently curved dome with a central chimney resting on its walls. In the southern half of the trench, additional ovens or kiln features may exist, but it was not possible to define them clearly. It's nevertheless clear that the area contained a kiln complex, a find of major significance for this period, and the third of its kind known from the Middle Neolithic in the region. Samples for dating determination of firing temperature have been collected. In Trench He 16, uh, 16, opened in 2017 to verify the existence of a ditch identified by geophysical excavation investigation, the goal for 2019 was to excavate fully and define the shape of the ditch. Excavation was constrained, but revealed that the ditch was U-shaped, stepped on its eastern and western side. Five fill contexts were identified, suggesting a complex history, including periods of natural filling, perhaps during abandonment of the site. The ditch does not seem to have been defensive, but was probably used for water management, for garden cultivation, or for watering animals. Another possible use, however, was for clay extraction. Its proximity to the area of the kilns, only 30 to 40 metres away, strengthens this assumption. The project's theatre archaeology programme continued with a performance conceived by Efthemis Steu and Electra Angelopoulou on the theme of women, involving the on-site participation of a group of women of various ages from the two closest villages, Neo Monastiri and Vardali. About 200 people took part in the site tour, performance and the following feast. Plans are now underway for the long-term preservation of the site and its development as a heritage space open to the public through a collaboration with the University of, the Western, of Western Attica Conservation Department. The team is now focused on publication, including the proceedings of a two-day workshop held at the BSA in January 2019. In 2019, the Knossos Hypsades project, in collaboration with the Heraklion Ephraim of Antiquities, continued to investigate a neighbourhood within the southern suburbs of the Bronze Age megacity of Knossos, combining study with further investigation of the larger site. The 2014-15 excavations of Building 1 and adjacent areas, combined with Sinclair Hood's nearby excavations and Hogarth's houses A and B, revealed the contour contours of a Knossian neighbourhood. Geophysical survey, begun in 2018, continued in 2019 to situate this excavated neighbourhood within its wider context. Previous magnetometry and resistance surveys carried out in 2010 and 11 did not offer a clear picture of the detailed layout of structures. Renewed geophysical survey in 2018 thus in integrated three intensive high-resolution geophysical survey techniques, magnetometry, resistivity and ground-penetrating radar, GPR, to achieve a, a detailed mapping of subsurface features across the two, two hectare uh, expropriated plot. Work in 2019 focused on magnetometry and GPR, given the success of these techniques in 2018. Survey was carried out on a 20 metre grid for both methods. Because field work only finished in mid December, GPR results are not yet available, and magnetometry results are the focus of this report. Combining data from both 2018 and 2019, the survey shows an extensive array of positive, black, and negative, white anomalies consistent with archaeological features and deposits. In 2018, the survey had revealed the possible trackway running from north to south in the centre of the open area, to the south, with a possible complex of buildings immediately to the west. 2019 survey confirms there are further orthogonal, orthogonal uh, negative uh, magnetic anomalies thought to correspond to additional buildings in the northern and eastern parts of the survey area. Buildings are thought to be visible because of the contrast between the fills of the rooms and the walls, rather than the magnetic properties of the materials used to construct the walls. 
One of the contributions of the geophysical survey is to pinpoint the location of the sanctuary of Demeter, a classical sanctuary with minoan deposits beneath, excavated in the 1960s. Using the magnetometry results and the published excavation photographs, it appears likely that the sanctuary is situated as shown here, in the northwestern part of the plot. Processing of GPR results will generate new information to assess and refine this inference further. The fieldwork carried out by the Gipsades team reminds us that Knossos remains a key focus of BSA research, and we're delighted to be contributing three lectures next month on the BSA's fieldwork in Crete to the cycle of lectures currently being held at the Museum of Cycladic Art. Our activities extend from work on legacy material, the House of the Frescoes I reported last year, study for publication of the Neolithic site, excavated by John Evans, now nearing completion, uh, and the recent publication of the Minoans Mason's Marks, just referred to above, as well as ongoing study of the size and shape of Knossos through time, through time by the Roman Geophysics Project that ended in summer 2018, and the Knossos Urban Landscape Project, which published online in 2019 seven papers spanning the entire history of Knossos's occupation as part of the proceedings of the 12th International Cretological Congress. Crucial to this work, as a, both as a base for research and as a resource in itself, is the Knossos Research Center that contains the Knossos, the Knossos Stratigraphical Museum, known affectionately by us as the Strat. As many of you know, the Strat has long been in need of serious renovation, and the BSA has worked for some years to develop plans for its reconstruction, as shown in this visualization. Those plans are now ready, and we're working towards their approval towards the end of 2020. With an estimated price tag of £2 million, this is, we think, the largest capital campaign the BSA has ever undertaken. We have branded it the Knossos 2025 project, and it will require planning, participation and partnership on a very large scale. We've made a start in raising awareness of the project at a high-profile Minoan-flavoured event, accompanied by Minoan food by Minoan Tastes and Cretan music by Ross Daly and Kelly Thomas, generously hosted at the UK Ambassador's residence last May. Our serious fundraising campaign will get underway in the coming months. Our Knossos curator, Kostis Christakis, has devoted considerable time and effort to managing and driving this process forward, and I express our thanks to him for all he has done so far. An important component in the broader campaign is public engagement at Knossos, and Kostis has excelled at this in 2019. In July, he organised Earth, Water, Fire, celebrating Cretan pottery from antiquity to the present, together with the Thrapsano Cultural Association, the Centre for the Study of Modern Pottery, G. Psaropoulos Foundation, with assistance from the region of Crete and the participation of the effort of antiquities of Iraklium and the potters of Thrapsano themselves. Events included lectures on Cretan pottery from prehistory to the present, as well as guided tours of the Bronze Age palatial centre of Galatas and the Byzantine church of Ayus Pandeleimon at Vitariano, plus an exhibition of photographs by Ronald, Ronald Roland Hamper and Adam Winter. These occasioned emotional moments when those portrayed in the photographs shared their memories and emotions 50 years on. For the August full moon, the BSA, the effort of antiquities of Iraklian and the friends of the Savas Petrakis art gallery in Vianos staged an evening of music and poetry readings, Amica Silentia Luna. The event included classical and modern pieces for trumpet and piano and selected readings of Greek and international literature. The Strat is also an essential resource for the BSA's postgraduate training course in prehistoric Greek and Roman pottery, coordinated by our Crossos curator and taught by a small team of experts. We view our courses as the BSA's contribution to the next generation of researchers, starting with the undergraduates who take the BSA's longest running course, run for the 47th time in 2019, a three-week masterclass in the archaeology and topography of Greece led by the assistant director and featuring guest lectures by local specialists and entry to areas not normally accessible. We express our gratitude to local colleagues who offer their expertise and facilitate all our courses in many ways. In addition to postgraduate training courses in Greek epigraphy and Linear B in Mycenaean Greek, the Fitch Laboratory inaugurated a course on glass in the Mediterranean and Near East that will now alternate with the ever popular Introduction to Ceramic Petrology that ran for the ninth time in 2019. That conveniently brings me to another important BSA research facility, the Fitch Laboratory, now in existence for 46 years, which hosts and facilitates research in various fields of science-based archaeology, 
including human osteology and zooarchaeology, contributing to their full integration within archaeological practice in Greece. It was a great pleasure to host at our London Annual General Meeting last week a lecture by Fitch Laboratory Director Evangelia Kiriadzi summarising the last 10 years of the Fitch's activities. This lecture should be available to view shortly in the BSA video archive. 2019 was another productive year for the Fitch, which hosted eight postdoctoral researchers, five doctoral students, and over 40 visiting scholars from around the world. These scholars represent more than 30 research projects associated with the study of ceramics, as well as biological materials, from a number of sites across the Aegean and beyond, investigating questions of continuity and innovation, mobility of goods and people, technological transfer, colonization, and economic and social transformations from the early Neolithic through to the Byzantine period. I present merely a selection here. Last year saw the final stages of Tract, a Marie Sklodowska Curie project carried out by Bartek Lisch under Evangelia Kiriadzi's supervision. The project's aims were to identify, and more importantly, to understand the movement and relocation of Egenetan tradition potters along the Euboean Gulf, the Ebian Gulf, around 1200 BC. The main questions posed concerned the potter's motivation to leave Egina, the duration and scale of that movement, their interaction with local societies, familiarization with new landscapes and resources, and on a more general level, to situate this phenomenon within a complex picture of social and political changes characterizing the final stages of the Bronze Age in the Mediterranean. To that end, pottery from six sites was analyzed following the Fitch's integrated approach, leading to the identification of several fabric groups at each site where the Egenetan style cooking pots, both imported and presumably locally made. Data deriving from archaeometric analysis were brought into dialogue with archaeological observations on pottery and its contacts, revealing an intricate and dynamic pattern of limited exchange and multiple, mostly short-lived loci of production, all within a period of only a few decades. Some of the areas where Egenetan type cooking pottery was produced could be identified based on geological sampling and the Fitch reference collection. Other locations remain elusive or can be assigned only to larger regions all attest to high level of mobility and of Egenetan tradition potters that may have started as itinerant potting practices shortly before 1200 BC, before evolving into permanent relocation in the following decades. Although focused on the past, the project also examined modern instances of potters' mobility through published accounts and also visits and interviews with potters still active in Greece, mainly within the area of Volos. This interest in the study of craftspeople mobility under different historical conditions culminated in the organisation of the international workshop Craftspeople Mobility in the Archaeological, Historical and Ethnographic Record, I mentioned earlier, co-organised with the Hellenic Folklore Research Centre of the Academy. Archaeologists, ethnographers, folklorists, art historians and historians working in the wider Aegean region engaged in dialogue to stimulate inter interdisciplinary interaction in the study of human mobility and enhance our understanding of the complexities behind that mobility, focusing on the same geographical region, but in different, different historical contexts. The Fitch phase of a second project is about to finish too. Dr. Maria Duggan spent the second year of a three-year British Academy postdoctoral fellowship in Athens. Her project, based at Newcastle University and run in collaboration with the Fitch, is Tintagel, Trans-European Connections in the Post-Roman World. Maria has undertaken the analysis of 103 pottery samples from the site of Tintagel in Cornwall. Over the past year, she, together with Evangelia Kiriadzi and Noemi Müller, has been working on the samples using both petrographic and chemical analysis and revealing new evidence about the origin of these pots in known and unknown production centres in the Aegean, the coast of Cilicia, uh, and the Mediterranean and Atlantic coasts of Iberia. We marked the close of Maria's stay in Athens with a symposium at the BSA last month, Distant Seas, Connected Worlds, Tintagel, Britain and Greece in Late Antiquity. The meeting brought together researchers from Britain, Greece, Cyprus and Spain to discuss this fascinating story of Aegean pottery recovered at Tintagel over the past century and to consider these artefacts in the wider context of long distance links between Greece, the Western Mediterranean and Southwest Britain during the 5th to 7th centuries AD. Maria will shortly return to the Truro Museum, where she will deploy the new information on the ceramic types gained from the Fitch Lab analyses to conduct a full assessment of the entire imported ceramic assemblage from the site. The ultimate goal is a book-length publication of these results. 
A number of other long-term projects are reaching maturity or publication, and there will be more to say on these next year. Three new collaborative project init research initiatives have just begun. Investigation of a newly recovered 6 millennium BC pottery production site on the Western Thessalian Plain. Technological study of pottery from the site of Bronze Age Cheshme Balararsa uh, on the Aegean coast of Turkey, a key location for understanding connectivity and interaction between Anatolia and the Aegean, and investigation of ceramic provenance in the north and northeastern Peloponnese through an extensive programme of clay sampling and analysis. Once again, the Fitch hosted three early career researchers as bursary holders. Elena Kaipos from Bonn, an alumna of the Introduction to Ceramic Petrology course in 2018, returned to undertake petrographic analysis of tile samples to reconstruct the organisation of tile manufacture, consumption and distribution in classical Olynthos and the wider Chalkidiki region. Despite their ubiquity, tiles have been largely unexploited as a source of information about economic and social life in antiquity. Elena's work promises to fill this gap. Stavroula Floriki from Sheffield combines petrographic and chemical analysis in her study of the rich pottery assemblage from late Bronze Age Hanya, ancient Kidonia. Seeking to interpret the history of this important southern Aegean urban centre excavated by Greek, Swedish and Danish colleagues. Already her research is beginning to reveal a previously unknown wealth of imports, including cooking pots from nearby and more distant places such as Kithra and Egina. Having concentrated for his doctorate on the early Bronze Age pottery of Samos, Sergios Menelao, also from Sheffield, initiated investigation of the preceding final Neolithic period, combining typological study with petrographic and elemental analysis of pottery from two sites, Castro Tigani and the Hiraeon. He aims to trace uh, technological patterns and cultural relationships between these neighbouring settlements in the final Neolithic period and also in the following early bronze phases, in collaboration with Urania Kuka from the University of Cyprus. The study will significantly enhance our understanding of connectivity, cultural influences and technical tra technological transfers across the Aegean at the end of the Neolithic and the beginning of the Early Bronze Age. This is a time of anniversaries. 2,500 years since the battles of Thermopylae and Salamis this year, and next year, 200 years since the beginning of the Greek Revolution. Although the BSA was only established 65 years after the Greek Revolution in 1886, many British Philhellenes were involved in those events, and we hold the archive and library of George Finlay, a prominent one of, member of that group. It's a pleasure, therefore, to note the contemporary contributions of British scholars, both to the commemoration of Thermopylae and Salamis, in the persons of Roderick Beaton and Paul Cartledge, seen here, and to the celebration of 1821 with the appointment of three British scholars to the Elada Theuchiliades Icosiena Committee, chaired by Yana Angelopoulou Daskalaki, and those are Roderick Beaton again, Richard Clogg and Mark Mazar, although I know he now teaches in Colombia. Also, Correis Professor Vonda van Steen from King's is co coordinating 21 events in the UK for 2021, supported by the consortium of 14 foundations led by Ioannis Manos of the National Bank that goes under the name of Protovulia, Protovulia, Hilia Octacosia Icosiena, Viuchiliades Icosiena. 2021 is a significant year in another way, since it will be Britain's first outside the European for almost half a century. I reaffirm, however, what I stated this time last year, when things were much less certain, that the BSA remains fully committed to developing and enhancing its multiple valued partnerships and collaborations, many of long-standing, as we continue our important mission to promote the study of Greece in all its aspects. And with that positive thought, I end this summary of the BSA's activities in 2019.